On today's episode of the Infinite Loop Show, there are new MacBook Pros coming. Well, actually, we don't know that. It's kind of a rumor, so we can't really say. Well, there are going to be two Thunderbolt ports. Well, that's a rumor, too, and your flies down. What? On the Infinite Loop Show! Well, everybody, welcome to another silly episode of the Infinite Loop Show. I'm Michael Gaines. And I'm Casey Coughlin. <laughs> What's going on, Casey Coughlin? Um, nothing. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. And have you played Diablo 3 yet? No! I have, have yet to play that freaking game. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I cannot I, get on there. Did I make you angry? A little bit. No. Um, yeah. That reminds me, they're, uh... Probably won't be a hangout after the show today because I am going to play that game if it freaking kills me. Yep, and I'll be right there with you. <sighs> I'm level 15. Oh, you shut your I'll mouth. I'll start a new tune. Don't worry. God. For those of you that are watching, you can see my big Diablo 3 box in the background. Uh, the, I picked it up at GameStop and they had a little <laughs> trivia contest. So the question was, uh, what novel opened with, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And as a Star Trek fan, every Star Trek fan knows. Well, really. That was a tale of two cities. I would think most people should know. People should know it anyway. I knew it then, too. I knew it in 1982. People don't read books anymore, I guess. <laughs> That's right. They read Kindles. Wait, or yeah. iPads. <laughs> See what I did there? Uh-huh. Hey, I, have, I have some sort of personal big Apple news today. You do, indeed. Should I tell everybody what it is? Well, now that you've let one cat <laughs> out of the bag, you might as well let them all out. I only have one cat. <laughs> oh, well, that's it, folks. Good night. <laughs> My first commercial iPad app was, or iPhone universal app, I should say, was uh, approved about two hours ago. Yay! Several, it's official. It's official, my first commercial app. And I had written apps before. Um, except I wrote them for myself. This was the first one that I had done for a company, and so it's not going to be the now last. You're be a millionaire? No, because the app is free. It's for a subscription right. service, so I'm not going to go out there and tell that everybody what it profit. is. What? What? Yes. Well, people have to <laughs> sign up for the uh, for the sub subscription service, so I can't. I don't. I don't want to say what company I work for. I try to keep that private. And the app is not something that people are going to be like, oh, Angry Birds. No, I didn't write a new Angry Birds or anything. It's essentially a tool based on what our company does. And so this is the first step into building a bigger app later on. And that's going to be the full-blown version uh, for iOS. So that'll be very nice. But I am celebrating. Here's a champagne if you're watching. Tink. <laughs> Yay. So welcome to the Infinite Drunk Show. <laughs> if you're drunk after what, a couple of champagnes, then no, I'm not. I'm, I, I'm not even buzzed. This stuff Good. is weak sauce. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> this week in horrible champagne reviews. This was something that somebody brought over for New Year's Eve this past year, and I just oh, I need something to drink because I have to celebrate. And it was the only bottle of champagne that we had, and it's something they they sell at Seven Eleven. I guess apparently. so. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> I don't like it. All right, let's move on to the news, shall we? There is an Apple icon that was so was pe people found it in uh, iCloud, uh, beta.icloud.com. They found and a few icons there. Th well, they did, but the most important one. For a one, short period of time. Mm -hmm, if you're familiar with uh, the uh, with the, the Xcode suite, there are a mm -hmm. bunch of developer tools, and um, one of them is similar to that. And now I'm blanking on its name, despite the fact that I lived in that app for months. <laughs> It's not Xcode. <laughs> no, it's not Xcode. I'll tell you in a second. It is uh, burp, 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 burp. Instruments. Mm. Can't believe okay. I forgot that. Anyway, it's similar to Instruments in the sense that it shows a blueprint of an app with a pencil over it. Mm -hmm. And so people are thinking that there are going to be iCloud apps, which is interesting because if people are going to be able to write iCloud apps... This is going to mm. compete a little bit with Google Plus and mm, Chrome. Yeah. Yo, uh, Chrome especially, yeah. 
they're not I don't think they're going to be browser specific. I don't think they're going to be Safari specific. This is going to be iCloud specific. I don't have I have no idea what the API is. I'm a developer and I'm just saying I know nothing well, about Well, I'm sure this. they're going to favor WebKit. Probably. Uh but I'm just saying that I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, categorically deny. <laughs> If you want to know what the icon stands for, I don't know what it means. But, of course, people are thinking that iCloud apps are coming. And we've got WWDC in less than a month. Yeah. Oh, we're know? looking uh, at a new iOS 6, mm -hmm. new possibly a new Mac OS. Mm -hmm. So. Well, yeah. Well, it's not. Yeah, it's going to be a, a mountain lion, which was. Do we have that on the list of stuff today? No, I don't think we do. So I'll just mention it real quick. Yeah. Uh, Mountain Lion was seated yesterday to developers. A bunch of problems with it. Nothing serious. They'll, they'll fix mm. it between now and then. They always do. Yeah. Yeah. I do not have it um, because I can't run it on my Mac Pro. Wah, mm. wah, wah. Yeah. Indeed. I need that sound effect. I need to have that on soundboard so that every mm -hmm. time I talk about my Mac Pro, I can just play that. Yeah. Go, wah, indeed. Wah, and then people will be sick of it and they'll stop listening to the show. <laughs> So that sounds good. So anyway, <laughs> I, I got off on a little bit of a tangent there. But yeah, we're, we're going to keep an eye on that. And I'm going to be very interested to see what happens at WWDC with this whole iCloud, possible iCloud developer tool. Mm -hmm. All right. um, well, along with that, new this week's round of rumors for iPhone 5 uh, <laughs> includes a... Uh, well, I guess it's just... A heavier rumor it's not really a confirmation or anything uh but that apple has been partnering with some uh top name screen manufacturers mm -hmm. and ordering a lot of screens in at least four inches and above mm -hmm. uh that they're saying could be for the new iphone 5 probably so it's looking like when you know a lot of people have been speculate speculating that um the iphone 5 is going to have a larger screen um, possibly to compete with the droids. Mm -hmm. um, but it also makes sense if they make the whole case a little bit larger to maybe hold a bigger battery mm -hmm. for 4G. Possibly. So maybe a big screen would be in order as kind of like a bonus mm -hmm. uh, side effect. Right. So... Uh it's gonna get. Uh, what do you do? You think we're gonna get a an announcement about the iPhone five at WWDC, or or do you think we're gonna see something? Later? I don't think they're going to announce hardware, and they're definitely. I don't think gonna show design or anything like that. They might um, talk about specs as it relates to the OS. Mm -hmm. That's that's mainly what I think they're gonna talk about. I don't think they're gonna be like, and here's the phone. Here's what it looks like. Just wait, you know, four or five more months. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they're just they're going to talk about features as it pertains to the new OS, which I'll probably announce. And Casey's audio just went oh, crappy. Fantastic. <laughs> That's okay. I'll just keep going. I'll just write it down. I'll fix it in post. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, what what were you saying for for those of those those people um, that were watching the video? I'm not sure where it dropped off exactly, but I was just saying that I don't think they're going to make any you know sweeping iPhone uh, announcements mm -hmm. pertaining to the phone itself, but more or less just what they have to let go of as it pertains to the new OS, because mm -hmm. they're most definitely going to announce that. And so, you know, if they're going to announce some new feature that kind of ties into 4g then people will like extrapolate from there right related to this i didn't write it down because i didn't think it was really even good for our rapid fire well maybe it was but i'll, I'll mention it anyway i saw an article about two hours ago that said that apple is starting to slow down it's it's buying of the the components for the iphone 4 4s oh. so it, it says they were slowing it down by 25 percent so, I didn't see, um, but then that that kind of gives more weight to. Um, well, I mean, we all kind of knew, but like that, the iPhone five would have a drastically different design and and take different components mm -hmm. if you know the 
if the four S components need to like be stop, if they need to stop purchasing mm-hmm. one set of components, yeah, yeah. So I only mention that because if they're starting to, if they're starting to stop, if they're starting to slow yeah. down their purchasing of the components now, mm-hmm. and the rumor is that it's not going to come out until September or October. When is the announcement going to be? That's what I'm just a little concerned about because you've got WWDC in three plus weeks. Mm-hmm. And if it's coming out in September, October, then you're going to want to make the announcement like around July, August. So why not do it in June? So I don't know. It, well, it's what a did little they lippy. do last year? They didn't um, announce the new phone until like right before, like weeks before. Yes. And they did the same thing with the iPad. So it's not like they couldn't have just a teeny tiny event, like say October 1st. And then release it like True. October twenty fifth or something. <laughs> um, I think the difference is that the four S was sort of a, it, it was not a major reno- uh, revision. Yeah. So that's entirely possible. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, I guess what I'm saying is I would like to see an iPhone five announcement. I am not expecting one. Well, yeah, one. I, I think like we all want to see what they have going on. Mm-hmm. But I bet that a they're not going to even mention a word about it right up until they're ready to ship it, mm-hmm. like the iPad. And b, you know, the more dramatic the change, then the more. Uh, substance they have to give it its own little um, like their own little announcement Mm -hmm. you know so they don't have to do it at WWDC and they don't even necessarily have to do it at that um, music announcement they always do for the iPods in August September they can have like a third or fourth keynote just for the iPhone (laughs) in September or October well there's always one more thing no exactly I mean the more I think the more uh, things they can kind of break out and have like little blips on the news radar every so often, instead of like piling them all into like two announcements throughout the year, they can spread it out across four or five keynotes throughout the year and then have more dominance over the news cycle all throughout. Yeah, true. Apple is bringing notes and reminders to iCloud. Uh, yeah, this kind of goes with your uh, first note. Yeah, the uh, the people that were looking at beta.icloud.com and, and also the, there was a developer.icloud.com were saying that there are two new icons on the on the login screen, which are notes and reminders. Now, mm-hmm. in order to deal with notes, you have to go into mail. And on so, the desktop. On the desktop. And so now you're going to be able to do it on the web. So that's going to be really nice. I use notes a ton. I use it for writing mm-hmm. down ideas. And we've talked about this before, this versus Evernote and that whole thing. And right. and having reminders on iCloud, I, well, mm, I personally probably will never use it because I'm not big. I, I just use my phone. I just done. And oh. so I never really have to fire up a, a new window, log into my system into my account yeah and then, yeah, yeah that's put in true. my reminder i just use my because this would primarily be for the desktop mm-hmm. and if they're going to integrate i mean both of these things are going to be their separate apps in mountain lion anyways so it's kind of weird that they're going to make them web apps unless they're kind of trying to target windows users in the icloud market maybe it's, it's so, possible because they're going to have, yeah. Like if you have just an iPhone and I or an iPad and a windows machine and then you can still kind of, uh, keep track of that stuff and kind of play along on mm-hmm. your windows machine. If you have an <laughs> iCloud account, play nice with the Apple people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, and even more to that point, if they made iCal and, uh, address book web apps, because those are uh, another two uh, applications that Windows don't have and really kind of sync weirdly and janky on Windows because mm-hmm. yeah, they don't have those apps. So then they got to go to Outlook Calendar if, if you have Outlook. And if not, then I guess you're not syncing calendars or, <laughs> you know, to your Windows contact. So you don't use that. Well, OK, whatever. We'll just drop the ball on that. And, you know, and it's just, it's kind of like 
um, like a a splay of dead ends almost on out of iTunes onto the Windows desktop, and there's no little endpoints like there are on on the Mac for mm-hmm. all those apps to pick up and sync their uh, information. Mm-hmm. So we'll keep an eye on this as we keep saying with WWDC coming. We should have a WWDC watch. Oh, we should. Oh, we should. Because it's this only three weeks be. away. So the next three shows will be all about WWDC. <laughs> no. Yes. 2012. <laughs> um, all right. So Apple. Well, this gets kind of weird. At first, the story was Apple approaches antivirus firm Kaspersky for security improvements. Yeah. And then Apple was like, no, we didn't. And then Kaspersky was like, well, hey, we, we kind of asked, you know, hey, Apple, can we do this thing over here in the corner? And then Apple said, do whatever the hell you want. So we could, well, we went ahead and did it. Mm-hmm. Um, in any case, um, Kaspersky was one of those antivirus firms that uh, first found and kind of published the flashback uh, virus. Right. That has been, um, well, I <laughs> Taking guess. Taking over Max. <laughs> yes and no. no um, right. Been popping up here and there in the news. And uh, not a huge thing. It's just a virus that takes care or takes advantage of a Java loophole. But Apple pushed out a fix and la la la. Mm-hmm. Um, but Kaspersky has been kind of, uh, I guess, ramping up or at least trying to take advantage of this uh, little uh time in the spotlight they have uh, for <laughs> Mac users and saying like, oh, well, you know, Mac's uh, security is pretty lax and, uh, you know, we've got a whole list of recommendations and improvements and you should really get our Kaspersky antivirus for Mac and da 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 um, <laughs> Which I'm not going to buy. Right? Uh, run out to your local Best Buy kids. Um, <laughs> but a second half of this story was... Um, When Apple pushed out that update to finally close this Java loophole that Flashback and all its brother and sister viruses took advantage of, Apple only pushed it out for Snow Leopard and higher. Mm -hmm. They kind of left Leopard and the younger OSs uh, in the dust. So um, along with this story was a uh, companion story that said Apple... I was finally pushing out an update for Leopard for the flashback virus. Good. Yeah. So they're, that's they're, good. Wasn't it like a tenth of the users or, or a tenth of the infected machines were on Leopard? Something I want like to say it might have been more than that. Hmm. Um, but I'm not sure. I mean, it was still significant. I mean, I there's, I think, a still a, a significant enough chunk of people on Leopard. More significant than... You know, then you can just say, okay, well, whatever. Who cares about them? <laughs> Push like, them to Snow Leopard. <laughs> like, you know, Panther people, you can say, okay, really? I mean, <laughs> really? Jaguar, um, come on. And Yeah, and maybe even Tiger people, you can be like, okay, really? Get off of Tiger already. Um, we're not pushing out updates anymore. But Leopard, I think, isn't that old and still has a lot of users on it to where not pushing out a huge update like this because any virus update for the mac i would consider a huge update seems pretty sad yeah it is <laughs> gets no leopard i think it's free now didn't we say like uh, a week or two ago that it was free if you have leopard? um uh, sure i don't know um i heard i heard that was it was gonna go free but i don't think it's actually gone free yet okay Verizon is going to destroy your unlimited data plan if you go to 4G LTE. I am disgusted by this whole thing. You're going to destroy it? Yeah. If you have 3G unlimited data, an, uh, a data plan with Verizon, and you go to 4G LTE, then you can say it will adios. You. Yeah, they say adios to your unlimited data plan. I suppose they did that because they wanted to pull people onto these new 3G, what were new then. 3G yeah. networks, and now everything's going 4G LTE. I have a 4G LTE MiFi, and the thing is just wicked fast. It's it's worth what you pay for. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> but people are upset. There are a lot of people upset on the internet saying that they're they're pissed at Verizon for getting rid of this. And 
I have to agree with that because you buy into a plan. Yeah, companies have the right to do whatever they want, but you buy into a plan, you think you're going to stick with it. And well, what? I mean, th- that might have been the kind of mind share eight or ten years ago. But, I mean, the way uh, companies have been dropping this right and left for at least the last four or five years. Sure. It's... It's not a surprise. Okay, we get it. Nobody can be unlimited. And the way that everyone's data usage has grown exponentially, not just on smartphones, but on tablets. You throw in MiFi's. You have many more devices that are using this same Mm -hmm. network. Uh, 3G and 4G laptops now, air cards. You know, all of this. There's way more activity. And that same activity is being used i mean they're using more bandwidth as well so not only do you have more devices and more users but those same users are using more bandwidth with what they're doing Mm -hmm. there's more sophisticated activity happening now and so i mean it's not terribly surprising i mean it sucks and it's frustrating but at the same time it's like you can only fit so many cars on the freeway true i think they're doing this as a deterrent so that people will be able to think about how much data they're using. Like, for example, for the last, I don't know, four or five months, I'll get a notice from AT&T saying that this phone number is is getting close to its data limit. It's my daughter because she watches YouTube videos all the time. (laughs) And I keep telling her, stop watching YouTube videos. Just wait until you get home. Wait till you're on Wi-Fi. She yeah. does it. Yeah, she does it like when she's in the car or something like that. And I said, stay off the internet oh, as um, much as you can when you're when you're out and about. And so, yeah. But but apart from that, yeah, you're right. Is that years ago when we got these unlimited plans? What did we do? We surfed the net. Maybe we checked our email, and that was it. Now right. it's all this multimedia stuff, just like you said, with mm-hmm. a whole bunch of different devices, tablets, phones. And so they're going to go into a tiered system. Well. Okay, just don't nickel and dime the crap out of me. I guess what I'm saying is if I'm paying 40 bucks a month for unlimited from AT&T mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I move to some sort of 4G LTE mm-hmm. uh, with an iPhone 5, which I'm assuming is going to happen, why mm-hmm. wouldn't it? Because we you know, we got it with the iPad 3. Yeah. Then I would want to spend plus or minus, of course it's probably going to be plus, 5 bucks for the highest tier. Because if I was paying right. thirty bucks for unlimited under three right, G, yeah, yeah, and my data usage isn't going to change, like my my data usage habits are not going to change under four right. G LTE, then I should pay the same amount of money. That's how I feel. So, um, well, yeah, um, I mean, all consumers are going to feel that way and feel like. You know, I've been doing this for so long. Why are you changing it? And loyalty and blah, blah, blah. Mm. But, you know, what this also kind of feels like is what is kind of happening just about everywhere else in the, um, in like the job market and in terms of wages and whatnot. Mm-hmm. You know, when they uh, renegotiate a contract or, or lower wages in a workplace, what's the first thing they do after that? They try and squeeze out the older people who are at the old high wages <laughs> and, and rehire new sure. people at the lower wages. Sure, of course. So that's exactly what they're trying to do is squeeze out the grandfathered in unlimited people, get them onto the new plan, which is at a lower tier for more money. Mm-hmm. And, and let me just remind people that Verizon still cannot do data and voice at the same time. Yeah. No, God. And I, mean, and I think about that all the time because every time I can't get a signal and I just curse AT&T and I'm like, that's it. I'm going to Verizon. And it's like, wait, like every other phone call I make, I use data at the same time. Mm-hmm. I'm con- Anytime like I'm on the phone or I'm walking around at work and I'm, I'm making a call and somebody says, okay, well, take down this number or take down this thing. I can say, okay, wait, put them on speaker, go to notes and take down <laughs> a note, you know, mid stride or whatever. Yeah. I don't need to you know, run to my desk and get out a pen and paper or something. Yeah. I do that constantly. Sure. So, 
we'll we'll have to see what happens with this because with me, I'm not thrilled to death with AT and T. Um, I don't hate them. I'm, look, people say AT and T signal sucks everywhere, and where I live in Jersey, it doesn't. It really doesn't. I don't have a lot of problems with AT and T signal. What I have a problem with is the fact that my only other choice for a better signal is Verizon, which it doesn't do voice and data at the same time. And so the only other alternative I have would be Sprint. And I'm not sure that I'm going to get a good signal with Sprint out like where my sister lives. Yeah, their network is even spottier than AT&T as far as infrastructure goes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, can they do data and voice at the same time? I think they can i think they can i think they can yeah um i think they can <laughs> okay i know it's been a long time i only say that because it's been a very very long time since i had sprint and when i did it, i know me too USB it's dongles, been so i don't know like what five or six years since the iphone came out yeah. since 2007 yeah. so oh well but hey guess what what it's time to throw your mac pro out the window wait my mac pro yes <laughs> and then you can buy two of these new macbook pros to replace it with oh uh, hold on one second i have to I, it, <laughs> <laughs> I have to find something on the internet real fast because he, he keeps saying that here it is wait hold on what? it's happening real fast oh. here we go you know what's coming oh, lightning quick <laughs> <laughs> that um yeah so hey we knew this was coming ivy bridge macbook pros Mm -hmm. so rumors abound this week on the interwebs and kind of all these news outlets are reporting on uh the similar rumors independently nobody's kind of sourcing each other so it's you know lends more credibility (laughs) that's amazing (laughs) thing i know right normally it's just Cult of Mac, reposting Mac rumors, reposting T U A W, mm-hmm. you know, but um, everybody was uh, posting this independently this time about the uh, new MacBook Pros being thinner, uh, not quite wedge MacBook Air thin, mm-hmm. but thinner than the current gen. Um, and one thing that's going to have to be possibly squeezed out if oh. they go to this thinner oh. design. Ethernet and Firewire. Hold on. I'm, I'm looking up Ethernet adapter for Thunderbolt. Um, so yeah. you and I were talking about this right. yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a big fan of losing the Ethernet adapter. And the reason... I- anybody (laughs) i don't think anybody is really no i mean i think there's more people that are like okay i can let go of firewire but i don't know anybody who's like uh i can totally let go of ethernet Mm -hmm. sure not um yes it does exist there's an article on anantech.com from july 8th 2011 that yes there is an ethernet thunderbolt adapter for gigabit so there you go. Yeah, so I know. I mean, I know it exists, and I know Thunderbolt has the capability to do that. It it does video data and networking, mm-hmm. um, and that's the other thing that they're getting possibly, according to the rumor, getting rid of FireWire and Ethernet in favor of two Thunderbolt ports, which I'm totally excited about. Um, I'm, and I'm okay with that. Oh, I could use like three or four Thunderbolt ports. The more the fucking <laughs> area. Like, just load it up with Thunderbolt, really. Well, I'm just saying that, like, like when they took the floppy drive out, you went, er, and when they took the CD drive out of the um, the MacBook Air, mm-hmm. I, I mean, because I still buy CDs and I still want to rip them. Yeah, you could buy an adapter. You can buy a CD-ROM drive adapter or DVD-ROM drive adapter. You're you're shaking your head. Look, I just ripped, I just ripped this, my Diablo 3 CD Why? soundtrack. Oh, well, because it came with the box. You can download it. You know, there's this thing. Not for free. I, did, I bought. No, I would have to rebuy it. I'm what? Just, the Diablo Is it the soundtrack? soundtrack? Yeah, the oh, Diablo the soundtrack. soundtrack. I was going to say, the game you can download. I, I guess the know. only part is the soundtrack now. Well, I'm just saying that I'm. The, I still personally have uses for CD-ROM, but but there's huh. an adapter. That, that's I my point. I bet you still it? use the mouse pad too. <laughs> There's still an ad, uh, an adapter that you can buy, and if there's an adapter for Ethernet, and that's all I really care about is the Ethernet. 
Yeah. Then, well, there's the USB uh, to Ethernet adapters now, and that's what you get actually with the MacBook Air. Mm-hmm. So, um, and another thing that's kind of surprising in this rumor that um, it'll have both USB 2.0 and 3.0 alongside Thunderbolt. Nice. That's nice. I like that. Which, I mean, wasn't Thunderbolt kind of competing with USB 3? Oh, yeah, but at the same time, you're, you're just going to have devices that work with USB 3 and not Thunderbolt. Yeah, it's no, I, I get compatible. that. Because so, there's tons of external hard drives and stuff now that is USB 3, and even though it's slower than Thunderbolt, it's apparently faster to adoption, right? So, Would you buy a yes. new MacBook? Oh, I'm sorry. Just like that. Continue. No, I'm not. You answered my question. Um, <laughs> I actually, I was going to order a new, I did order a new MacBook Pro for someone at work, mm-hmm. and they found out, it was a C-level executive, he found out, I didn't say anything, and he found out about this rumor, and he's like, hey, can you cancel that order? Uh, I heard new MacBook Pros are coming out, and I want that one. So. Mm. Well. I'm just going to keep my eye on it. Um, I don't think that you have this in the list, but uh, you and I both found about a day or two ago that benchmarks were coming out for the new Ivy Bridge MacBook Pros. Geekbench has them, yeah. Yeah, the Geekbench has them. And so I haven't seen any Mac Pros. I'm giving it until like September. If a new one doesn't come out by September, a new Mac Pro I'm telling you, just get two. They're thinner. You can fit two in your bag. It's it. You just thunderbolt them together, and it'll be like a Mac Pro. Just My, get- here's, let me ask you something. Can you? Can you? It's been a long time since I've done this because I have a MacBook Pro. Casey is actually on. For you watching the video here, I'll just show you. Look, this is my MacBook Pro. All right, so Ooh. that's running her video. I have one, but I never use it for anything other than the well, besides this for mobile development. And so I've never used it as a main machine in a long time. Can you? Boot a MacBook Pro with the with the lid closed. I know you could with some of the older models, but can you do that now? Um, because that yeah, would be a so. game breaker for I'm me. Pretty sure. Because I wouldn't I'm necessarily to think want to flip it open. The last time I actually booted it up with the lid lid closed, but I mean, I you know attach a display to it and close it all the time, and it'll run fine with it closed once it's mm. on. But I. Right, but I can't how do remember you... the last time I've actually from boot up because a the power button is on the inside. Exactly, that's my point. Is that you have to flip it open in order to get access to the power button, which is all the way in the back. So mm-hmm. you can't you can't just like lift it a quarter of an inch, stick your finger in there, push the button, and then close it. You you have to open it all the way, hit the button, and maybe then you can close it. But and then never turn it off. What? Just put it to sleep. <laughs> Problem solved. I um, well. I wouldn't be against buying a new MacBook Pro and then maybe reorganizing my work area here. Like mm-hmm. I've got my MacBook, my, my MacBook. I got my Mac Pro here next to me. That's that's running this whole show. And mm-hmm. if I could maybe build a shelf or something for like Thunderbolt or something like that with with a drive base, oh, maybe mm-hmm. I could do that. Keep it out of the way. That's that's the only problem that I have with running a MacBook Pro as my main machine is that now I've got to have all these attachments. I've yeah. got to have you know, my my attach because I've got four drives in this thing. So then you just get the uh, twenty seven inch cinema display, which pretty much acts as a port hub. Attach everything to that, and all you need to detach is the power to the laptop every time you need to leave, and it's just that. Yeah. Right. Everything stays attached to the cinema display, and you just attach the one power dongle to the laptop, and that's it. Yeah, I could do that. We'll see. And you got uh, two other sub so, articles. Yeah. Here. Um, also associated with this rumor, there's a rumor that the Ma- the new MacBook Pros might be switching back to Nvidia cards uh, after spending a few years uh, in bed with ATI. Hey, that's fine with me. I love Nvidia. I am cool with whoever has the best processing. I mean, for a long time, that was NVIDIA. Recently, yeah. it's been ATI. Um, I think on Windows side, if you were to build your own machine, I might go ATI still. But, really? Um, ATI? How come? 
because if you're, you're gonna do cr- i think if you're gonna do crazy setups with multiple monitors um ifinity i'm looking at you um their console for that the interface for setting up ifinity and configuring that is really nice see the, the way that i see it is that i look at the drivers for nvidia Mm-hmm. And I've been dealing with NVIDIA for a while. I, I, I might have mentioned this before a few weeks ago, is that I was such a big ATI fanboy for a long time. Mm-hmm. And ATI started trailing off, and NVIDIA, like the gamers that I was right. talking to, they were all going NVIDIA. Everybody in on Nantech yeah. and yeah. everybody yeah, in, in hard on CP, uh, they're all going to NVIDIA. Okay. And so mm-hmm. I did my research, and I bought an ATI card, whatever it was, years ago. And I loved it, not just because of the of the power of the card, but the drivers were really yeah. good. Yeah. And and Nvidia does a really good job with with working with the community. Whereas I think that that's true. A, yeah. When when ATI got bought out, everything started, in my opinion, started to fall apart. Yeah. And so I'm we'll not see. Really- I mean. Like I said, I'm not terribly partial, especially on the Mac program uh, platform. Mm-hmm. Whoever can get the job done and get <laughs> like the best freaking performance, then I'm going to get behind. Yeah. Great. Um, and then, obviously, the same rumor that we've been reporting for weeks now, Retina resolution on the new MacBook Pros, possibly bumping the price up 100 bucks more, but who's not going to pay another 100 bucks for a Retina display on a MacBook? True. So... It's not going to bother me. I'd like a retina display, even though I just said I'd like to boot it with the thing closed. Yeah, I like a retina display so I could just shut that shit down and uh, not look at the screen. <laughs> Screw the display. I'm, no, really, I I would use it out in the road and everything, but um, <laughs> I, I I don't know how it, I would I would it would be an upheaval for me to to move to a laptop as my main machine. <laughs> oh, stop that. <laughs> <laughs> it would be an upheaval an it would upheaval be because I've been things. using I've been using desktops for like 15 years as main machines or more I can't get rid of this baby I'd put it in the garage and use it as a server you literally can't get rid of it I can't yeah I can't <laughs> now I'll be like what 2006 Mac Pro nah the Sistar case remember this I do man I, I saw this in my feed and I just went oh this is still around well it's dead now <laughs> the U.S. Supreme Court says no, we're not going to deal with this anymore. You're done. Uh, this is where a company was starting to build Mac clones. Yeah, and and and, and just brazenly saying, "Look, you can buy this, and we're going to sell uh, Mac OS 10 with it, and you're not yeah. allowed to resell Mac OS 10." No. And of course, Apple sued and they won. And Sistar just kept coming up, coming back like like a a bad egg. What do yeah. they call it? A bad penny. That's what it is. <laughs> kept coming up like a bad penny and and just wouldn't go away. They kept fighting loopholes in the language of the EULA. Yeah. And there were rumors going around that the people behind this were higher ups. Like this wasn't mm-hmm. Joe Blow in his garage making PCs. There were some heavy hitters that were going to be behind this, but nothing ever came of it. No, as far as I ever heard, it was just Psystar, and they were just kind of like, "What? What? We're just offering this. What? You know, like." Mm-hmm. So it's dead. The Supreme Court said we don't want to hear anything about this anymore. You guys are stupid. Go home. <laughs> Pretty much. Mm-hmm. So I, I I brought that up because I figured it was dead and gone like a long time ago. Like um, yeah, but, no, I um, haven't heard anything about it in a long time. So you think, oh, I guess uh, I guess we're all done there. All right. So what? Oh, you're oh, still the here. Bad pennies back. What was that company <sighs> that was trying to sue for Linux? God, I forgot about that too. What? One of those cases that took forever to get resolved. Remember that? For Linux? I yeah, they were trying to sue for who? Not Linux. Um, Unix. Or who owned? Who owned Unix? I don't know. But I bet this Oracle Google case will be like that. Yeah. Going on forever. Forever. And uh, Langley in the chat room says, do you remember the Mac clones back in the day? Sure do. And I still have one of those CD-ROMs that they gave out at uh, Macworld New York. Of course you do, CD lover. I have it right here, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I think I do. I have to check. Yeah, talk about your thing. I'm gonna your Your next article, I'm going to look for this disc. Okay, well, 
in your pile of discs. So, uh, analyst reports nearly half of all iPhone owners would buy a Apple HD TV. Mm-hmm. Now that's okay, great, yeah, duh, that's not surprising. Um, what is surprising, um, and this was on Cult of Mac yesterday, is along with this story is a beautiful concept of an Apple HD TV. Mm, it's nice and tasty, isn't it? It's so pretty, and it uh, it shows Siri uh, kind of sliding in from the left of the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, how it might look on an actual Apple TV set. Um, I like this. I want this to be a thing. <laughs> Apple, do this. You, you desperately want this to be a thing, don't you? I want to talk to all of my things. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, I still have. This is it. The disc. For those people that uh, remember this, paracomputing disc. The reason why this was such a big deal um, is because this was given out during Macworld Boston 1995, and it had the first four levels of Marathon 2 on it. And so all the all the gamers really wanted this. And then, of course, I have the disc, too. Awesome. So, you should frame this. You want to make a light box for me? Um, sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's move on <laughs> to rapid fire. All right. You got the first one. Knocks up. All righty. <laughs> what? Aaron Sorkin, uh, who did The Social Network, has been confirmed to write Sony's Steve Jobs biopic. Uh, if anybody remembers Steve Jobs, or Sony, that's, well, I guess Steve Jobs too. What the hell? <laughs> Sony has the sole rights uh, to do a movie based on the Walter Isaacson biography of Steve Jobs. And though no one is set yet to play Steve, rumors are floating about George Clooney and, wait for it, Noah Wiley to possibly reprise the role from my favorite movie, Pirates of Silicon Valley. It's a great movie, by the way. It's a fantastic movie. If you call yourself a Mac fan, you need to go watch the movie right now. It was funny that you said wait for it because I just finished watching the finale of How I Met Your Mother. And if you if you watch that show, mm. wait for it. Yeah, you know what that means. Okay. Well, I don't. <laughs> I know you don't, but I do. <laughs> There is a fix for the delayed iMessages. You and I have both been hit by this. Uh, is that I'll find messages on either my iPhone or my iPad that show up like five hours later, six hours later, or something like that. The fix apparently is to remove <laughs> the iMessages beta app from Lion. There's your um, fix. Yeah. I, I think a bigger fix is just fix the freaking desktop messages app. Like you use I it. get slightly delayed messages on my iOS devices. It's not that bad. What's bad is the messages app on the desktop just not freaking working. Right. Constantly it's crashing. Constantly it's saying I'm disconnected when I'm not. Mm -hmm. Everything else is working. And then I look over at my buddy list and it says I'm disconnected for some reason. Yeah. It's the most unreliable, faulty piece of software I've seen Apple put out. Mm. But it's beta. Moving right along. <sighs> yeah, it'll be beta forever. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 2 launches for iOS tomorrow. Mm. Uh, the game is destined to be met with meh reviews since we all know how <laughs> every Episode 2 pans out. <laughs> well, I no, Star Wars Episode... Oh, well, no, well. Second mm -hmm. movie was great, but yeah, Episode 2 wasn't so hot. Yeah. Star Trek 2 was good. I wouldn't okay. name anything episode two. No? No. We named our show episode two on the second episode. It wasn't the title. No. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so you're not really looking forward to this. I'm not a big Sonic fan. I never was. I was up until the, like it was the longest name in history for a video game. Oh. What was it? Well, it's Sonic the Hedgehog 4 episode two. Oh, oh! I see what you mean. I thought you were talking about like, like an old, way like a super long for no reason. The Dreamcast or something like that. Never liked Sonic and never got into it. I'll probably download it. Right. Apple is defending Siri from a, a bunch of scavengers. <laughs> <laughs> 
there are some people that are out there and they look at these commercials and they say, I can't do that. In fact, there is one guy who says that he tried to get Siri to call him Rock God and it didn't work. Oh, darn. Or something. Now, you did this. You and I tested this a few months back yeah. and it worked for you, right? This is why there is tech support. Yeah. And, and Siri is still technically beta. Uh, yes. Another uh, beta, fabulous beta project. Well, I, I, I tried Siri at my sister's because she got a 4S. I don't have a 4S. I'm waiting for a 5. And so I was playing around with her system and it worked fine for me. Everything I threw at it, it worked. Yeah. Yeah. As for um, directions, worked. As for the weather, like, it worked. Like most people having a ton of problems, the problem usually lies between the device and um, <laughs> I guess the user. I don't know. I know. You had Siri change your name to something else, right? What was it? Yeah. Um, bad Battery. Oh, um, that's right. The ba- yeah, because we named it one of the shows Panda, Bad Battery. Um, I think it did Rock God. Um, and it worked. Awesome Panda. I think it's currently calling me Awesome Panda. <laughs> awesome Panda? <laughs> yeah. I like pandas. Uh, I wonder if these people try like, Siri, call me douchebag. <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> yeah. no, the, no, the people doing the lawsuit. I, you know what? There's there's always going to be somebody that it doesn't work for. and uh, No, yeah. There's always going to be somebody who can't freaking get it right and mm-hmm. can't get it straight and can't figure out why they can't get it right i know one person like, or two- it's not me clearly <laughs> i'm not so stupid that well guess what well I, it might not even be a question of being stupid i mean they could have uh an accent that siri doesn't understand or or maybe <laughs> oh yeah like jersey did Oh, hey, wait a minute. Oh, no, he was from the Bronx. Just kidding. He was from the Bronx. Totally different. So I could say, how you doing? And he could say, how you doing? And yeah. Yeah, it's such a big... Siri doesn't have that language pack yet. <sighs> <laughs> the Bronx language pack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guess where Tim Cook is now? Where? Tell me. He's meeting with the Speaker of the House, John Boehner. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, The actual topics of discussion are unknown, of course, but we can always guess since Boehner has been lobbying recently for a tax holiday for large companies with large offshore holdings to bring their money back into the U.S. at a lower tax rate. Mm. And since Apple currently holds more than half of its cash overseas to avoid uh, some major taxation, um, it looks like Boehner was meeting with Tim to maybe... um, Hey, you want to bring your money back over here? We like money well, here. Well, you know, there was that article, I forgot who wrote it, but he was blasting Apple for their their <laughs> their tax evasion, quote unquote, tax evasion. Yeah. yeah. And I got to say that I said this in the show a week or two or 3 ago whenever we we covered mm-hmm. this is that I would have done the same thing. I know, Apple's not the only one. They're just the high the most um high profile I mm-hmm. think of the companies. Yeah, and if this guy was CEO of a company that had all this money, would would he oh, not do the same thing? Of course he would. That's the thing. I mean, it's easy to look at it's it from one side of the fence and say, "Well, look what they're doing." It's but if, if that's happening to you, and you had to throw your money away, so because I wonder how much in taxes that Apple would have to pay to the American government if they just brought all their money over. It'd be a lot. It would be a lot. And it would be such a significant amount that I think they can actually put a dent in our debt. Yeah. Well, um, one of the um, articles had like 74 or something billion out of 101 or 111 billion Mm -hmm. is currently offshore. Yeah. Yeah. And so So taxes on that. To bring all that over, especially in one lump sum, would be friggin' crazy mm-hmm. yeah absolutely and lastly in our rapid fire there is a new book called who was steve jobs there is a series of these and it was written by pam pollock meg bell Belviso, if i pronounce that right john o'brien and nancy harrison and they have this series of books of famous people in the past and their um their significance to our culture. Oh, okay. And so they did one on Steve Jobs talking about his life and how he got started and things that 
he said, and it, it's a children's book. I think it's great. I I know that there was there was an article about a week ago that said leave Steve Jobs alone, but you know what? You, you can't you can't leave him no. alone. I mean, he was he was the the Galileo of our time. He was yeah. The, Just because somebody dies doesn't mean we have to stop talking about them. Yeah. I mean, even more. I mean, even more to that point, I would think we should talk about them more because they're literally not here anymore to talk for themselves true you know if steve was still alive he would be in the news specifically for things he was saying and doing you know himself he's not here anymore and so if somebody brings him up and says like oh this is relevant because of this or remember when he did that like that's not being disrespectful that's very you know almost the highest form of honor sure sure so if you're interested in that, it's on Amazon and it's called Who Was Steve Jobs? If you have kids that are interested in technology or or just culture, I think that it would be a, uh, a good book for them. Uh, let's move on to culture. I wanted to talk a bit about <laughs> something that's taking up a large portion of my garage, <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, my poster collection years ago. And it's... Not just Apple posters, but years ago I started collecting movie posters because my idea when I got a house was that I was going to have these movie poster frames and we were going to interchange them and everything. Mm. And then you get kids and that never happens. Right. But over time I started a big collection of Apple posters. And so when I started buying these things years ago, this is about maybe 2003 to 2005-ish, I bought... Um, a whole bunch of them, the, the G4 series, G5 series, the uh, the Rainbow iMac series. Uh, they were giving the uh, the Blueberry iMac poster, uh, um, iBook posters away at uh, MacWorld New York, mm-hmm. and I, I picked up a bunch. Then still have them. I have the uh, Hell Freezes Over poster. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, when iTunes came out for Windows, that's um, that's hanging up here too. I have the AppleMusic.com, and and you and I were looking at well, I was looking it up while we were doing the show notes, <laughs> and it turns out that the AppleMusic.com poster is being sold by one of those Apple memorabilia sites for four hundred bucks. You can make crazy. some uh, cash on them. Nah, I don't really want to. Yeah, I wouldn't either. But I have, you know, I was telling Casey that I thought I had my old Paramac G4 banner. And I thought I had it recently. And I was looking through my old emails, and it turns out that I bought one and then I sold it within six months of each other back in 2003. And I don't know why. (laughs) Don't know why I did that, but I did. But I thought I had another one around somewhere because I can't see why I would get rid of a G4 Cube banner. Langley uh, has one you can buy, apparently. Oh, does he? Mm -hmm. And I wonder how much he's selling it for. (laughs) Yeah. He's, well, he'll, he's, he's he'll that to, eBay lister. <laughs> he'll sell it to me for five hundred bucks. No, uh, as as some of you watching this video have noticed, I'm destroying this room and rebuilding it, and so a couple of posters are going to go up in here because I'm. I, I used to have a bunch of posters up above my desk, and then I got World of Warcraft banners, and those were taking over my room with my EQ one posters. But now <laughs> I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Sounds good. Sounds but good. Po- I have no posters, so none. There's what? my contribution. Yeah, but you make those really neat light boxes with the uh, the dead Apple devices in them. Yeah, I do. Um, this shadow box I just made with my first um, my first iPod, mm-hmm. uh, third gen. So, what? How deep is that frame? About th- two inches. Uh, Maybe an inch and a half, two inches, okay. I think. Yeah. And so, what do you do with that? You, you, I'm describing this for people that aren't watching the video. You, uh, it's a light box. It's a box. twelve by twelve uh, shadow box, about shadow box. an inch and a half to two inches deep. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I have a a few of those with the really old, either you know iPods or adapters, or I have a, a Mighty Mouse in one. Just kind of old stuff that um, I like having because Apple designs really nice stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't, you know, I want to get it out of like the junk drawer at the bottom <laughs> of my desk in, in a way. And so. put them up. I, I, I said to Casey that I'm going to send her my very first iPod. 
She can make yes. a shadow box for me. Totally, you should. Oh, you know what I just found? What? What? What did you just find? Oh, look at that. First gen iPod wow. shuffle. I don't know where the top is, though. It's one gigabyte. Wow. <laughs> look at that. It's like the it size looks like of the a Apple remote. Gum. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's a little bit smaller than the Apple remote. but Did you um, try it? Does it work? Uh, no, I haven't. I just assumed it didn't work because it was like uh, in at the bottom of a drawer mm. for years. Uh, it's kind of cracked. I don't know if it works. I'll try it later. But for the posters that I have, some of them I used push pins for years ago because they were relatively inexpensive. They didn't keep their value. But then the ones that I have that are expensive... For example, the um, the AppleMusic.com one. Mm -hmm. Either keep them rolled, or you can buy. They're all well, not all, but the ones that I have are twenty four by thirty six. So you can just go to Target or Walmart or something and just. Buy oh, a, good! It's a standard size. It's a That'd standard be, size. Yeah, yeah they were smart good. about that. But the, some of the other ones I have, like the G four one, is a banner. Mm -hmm. I think it's like four feet by two feet or something like that. It's yeah, ridiculously that's ridiculous. Wide. Uh, what are some of the? I, I threw away some of them because I looked them up on the internet and they weren't even selling for like five bucks. Nah. Yeah, and they were taking up a lot of space. So I said, nah, I'm gonna get rid of them because they're they're like Aww. junky ones. Yeah, well then. And they don't make them anymore. Apple doesn't make them anymore. No. No, nah, it's a shame because I would like to have like. Not even <laughs> for like their events, really. No. You know they they put like that huge. I mean, bigger than you can even sell and take home banner on the front of like Moscone or the Yerba Buena Center. Mm -hmm. But like inside or I mean, there's no other posters or anything like hanging from the ceiling. It's like the one outdoor one and then that's it. So yeah. even if you worked for Apple, there's like really nothing coming out anymore. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on to apps. We have mine for this week. Now, the reason why I, I brought this up is because around this time of year is when the weather starts to change a bit and we start getting thunderstorms a lot. And so I like to know what well, you're looking at me funny. You're, you've got that look on your face like, what? No, I just didn't know um, you guys got like a lot of thunderstorms in May. Uh, well, between May, May and September. Oh, uh, oh. October. Ooh. Yeah, we, we get them quite often because the um, the clouds come off the Appalachians as as they blow west uh -huh. or east rather, and so we get some um, we get some nasty thunderstorms from time to time, hmm. and I just like to know if they're when coming. that's gonna happen. Yeah, if they're gonna well, yeah, because you don't want to be outside. Or, you know, oh, why not? Yeah, <laughs> lightning's not dangerous. Uh, a house got hit here. A uh, block and a half away from from me, about two years ago. Oh wow! Yeah. So do you have like a lightning rod? No, no. But uh, it set the roof on fire. Living dangerously I over tell there. You. No, but weather bug. The reason why I brought weather, <laughs> I brought weather bug up is because of, <laughs> of the weather apps that I've tried. It's my favorite, even though um, there were some issues with the desktop version for Windows. Something about. Um, spam or something like that M many many years ago uh the weatherbug app for for the iphone and the ipad app is really slick it's, yeah it's That's my the, favorite one I so far first mm -hmm. uh, what i like about it other than the fact that it gives you your usual forecast and your arrowies is that it has the uh the maps but the maps also um give you pictures from different places around your area. So for me, I could say, well, let me take a look at what the weather is by my sisters. You can look at it on the map and then there's a push pin. You hit the push pin and it'll give you a camera view of a building somewhere and it'll show you what the weather is like. So you can actually see the storm oh, coming. Oh, like actual video? Yeah. Or? Well, huh. you can, some of it's got video also, but um, you can actually watch what the storm is looking like 30 miles west as it's coming in. I and see. so you can you can see it for real. And and I like this app a lot. Use it all the time in the summer, uh, just to just to see what's happening in my area. Um, I don't re I don't really use it in the winter because there's really no need to. It's yeah. either going to snow or it's not. <laughs> you don't really need to prepare for that. But the thunderstorms. <laughs> no, I, I I always check for the thunderstorms, and it's not out of fear or anything like that. It's just. Um, 
for example, we're out at, uh, let's say, a carnival or something like that or a baseball mm-hmm. game, and you just want to see how close the storm is coming. So that's what I use. Yeah. And I think it's free. Um, I think so, too. Yeah. I'm not sure. So check out Weatherbug. All right, what's yours? Um, just to kind of piggyback on yours for a second, I have a one app, but this isn't it. Um, uh, slightly semi-weather app that's more pertinent to California weather. Mm-hmm. Um, earthquakes. Oh, awesome. nice. It gives you notifications of where and when and what magnitude, uh, earthquakes are if they've just happened um i got that a few weeks ago and um hey guess what we have a lot of earthquakes it's weird (laughs) do Uh, you (laughs) well it like reports everything and like 1.0 stuff like you may or may not feel even and um i don't know i just find that interesting um we don't get since we i mean we get some but not nearly i guess as many as you do on thunderstorms we get earthquakes (laughs) <laughs> um, but the app that I wanted to talk about, since I just downloaded the iPhone version, mm-hmm. is iPhoto. Yeah, so tell us about this. Much like the iPad version, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's well-designed. It's well-organized. Um, I like using it more than the actual Photos app because um, it will kind of do the same thing as a Photos app will where it you know shows... Uh, organization of all your photos for your camera roll and albums and whatnot, but it's just nicer. It's nicer. It's um, presented better. The animation's better. Um, And then you can drill down right in there and edit. I Mm -hmm. mean, the Photos app, you can edit from too, just doing simple edits. Um, But then you can also make journals, which are like um, like the the full albums you can make on the desktop in iPhoto. You can kind of make simplified versions uh, on the iOS version of iPhoto, Mm -hmm. incorporating like the video and the weather widgets and the little map widget that shows the the, uh, geotagging data from where the photos were taken and stuff like that. And you can add text. Um, So it's just, you know, like all Apple apps, it's really pretty. And I'm a fan of pretty apps. So... uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, All I right. think it's four ninety nine in the App Store, but um, and I don't think it's connected to the iPad app because I had to pay twice for it. So that's oh, kind of a bummer. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think that's going to wrap it up for this show. If you want to contact us, I am at Star Mike on Twitter. Casey is Casey Queso. K a c e y k a s o. It's not <laughs> that difficult, jeez. <laughs> no, uh, like I said, it's it's the rhythm that bugs me. It sort of okay. messes me. Well, up. I'll get a shorter Twitter name. No, next that's time. okay. You can follow us on Infinite Loop TV on Twitter. You can also follow us on Google Plus, and you can follow us on Facebook. And of course, we're at theinfiniteloopshow dot com. If you want to send us email, we are at the it's the Infinite Loop Show at gmail dot com. Yes. All right. Send That'll us reviews, it. comments, criticisms, food, pictures of yourself. <laughs> with clothes on. Or not. No, with clothes on. I'm not picky. With Whatever. clothes on. Or not. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll talk to you later. Bye.